Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing great out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far. Here to bring the latest information on many things in this morning's video. The first thing we'll talk about is the tropics, and this will take up the majority of the video as there's been some concerning model runs over the last several days, especially over the last 24 hours on an area of interest in the Western Caribbean. And um, eventually this could get into the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, um, we know what the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean can do sometimes with these tropical systems. So we're going to talk heavily on this. We're going to go over the latest from the National Hurricane Center, all the model guidance that we have. We'll talk about ensemble guidance. We'll talk about an environment that does favor uh, at least moderate intensification, if not rapid, um, if something could get going in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, and then we'll talk about steering currents. We got you covered here. There'll be portions of this video where we'll kind of nerd out on you guys, draw on the screen a little bit, just kind of educate you guys as the audience. And uh, my main goal with this channel is to always do that in a way where you guys as the audience can understand. So ask questions. If you got in the comments, I'll definitely get them answered for you folks. And then, of course, we'll round this video off by talking about what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire lower 48 for your Thursday as there is a severe weather threat for a pretty large area of the middle of the country. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others uh, can do so too. So let's get rocking and rolling this morning. I think this is going to work for us this morning. It did not yesterday. Uh, yeah, so I think we're good to go. So there is nothing going on in this circled area right at this moment. Okay, I know you're thinking, well, why are you showing it to us? Well, because I'm not going to really talk on Gordon anymore. Gordon really isn't out there anymore. It's just the remnants of Tropical Storm Gordon just kind of drifting around out there. It could redevelop. So we're really just going to focus in on the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, Southwest Atlantic, uh, et cetera. So this area I just drew in, in, in yellow is the area we're going to be watching right here. This is where our area of interest is. Uh, so... I'm showing you this because I'm just telling you guys, this is kind of the the panel I'll be showing you guys a lot over the next uh, several days, maybe as much as the next, I mean, a week, week and a half. So this is where the origins of our system is going to try to consolidate, materialize as something called a CAG, Central American Gyrum, is going to try to throw some energy over into the Atlantic side, which will be the Western Caribbean, where it will have an opportunity to get its act together, form into a tropical cyclone, and then eventually have a chance to move north into the Gulf of Mexico where um, it could intensify. You know, some model guides has it going like this. Some of it has it going like that. Some of it kind of just right down the middle like that. And you got some that's still kind of going up like this. So this is the main storyline, the tropics. I'm not going to lie. Before we get going, I do have a concerning feeling about this one. And I said this a few days back. It just seems like we always get something that gets going down here or either Gulf of Mexico etc. Every single hurricane season, a lot of times, this is when our some of our quote-unquote big dog hurricanes uh, originate, so or the origins of it start. So uh, this is the main area we're going to be talking about. Nothing going on right now, but that'll change over the next several days. So we'll give you the latest from the National Hurricane Center. We do have these areas of interest right here, 40% chance to develop, 20% chance to develop. Both of these are basically uh, spawned off the remnants of Gordon. But even if these do form, you know, I don't expect these to bother anybody, but we will watch them. Okay. So let's just go on and click on this. If you remember in yesterday morning's a video, uh, we talked about uh, this having a 20 to 30 percent chance to develop over the next seven days. Well, now it's bumped up to a moderate risk of developing, which is uh, for 40 to 60 percent. Once we go to a 70 percent or higher, that goes to what we call a high risk of developing. But when we have this code orange, which it's quite literally an orange, what we just got some some weird terminology we use in the weather community. Um, this means that it has a 40% chance to 60% chance to develop. And a develop means into a tropical depression or a named storm. Our next name is Helene. Remember that system off the coast of the Carolinas did not take a name. It stated a potential tropical cyclone and it was the eighth one. So that's what it made a technical landfall as. So technically we have not take, taken that name H yet, which is Helene. Um, the letter H, which is uh, uh, the name is Helene. So after that, it's Isaac. Some weird stuff could happen, and this could end up becoming Isaac. There's a chance nothing ever takes a name. Uh, but just note that the next two names is Helene and Isaac. And we could take both of them in a, a pretty short amount of time coming up over the next several days. So 
uh, this is the area that we're watching. All right, so let's go over the latest GFS. And we got this all the way out to about nine, 10 days out. So we got a good full run of this actual run that is running right now. A lot of uh, using of the words of run. So the GFS run, 06Z morning. So we'll start all this model guidance off at Saturday morning, September the 21st. Okay, nothing going on down here right now. I want you to keep your eyes on this area right into here, right at the beginning of all this, all this model guidance that I'm going to show you guys. Okay, keep your eyes down there. Now let's keep this going. We take it into Sunday morning. Still not really anything going on. We get into Monday morning. I'm going to go all the way into next week at this point. Not a whole lot going on. Okay, you're going to see a lot of stuff dancing around up here too. This could be sneaky and take the name Helene, but I'm not going to talk about this much. Don't focus too much on the next actual name. Just Let's just focus on the chance of a tropical cyclone developing. We get into next Tuesday morning, so we're about five days out. We're starting to get this broad area of low pressure that's trying to get its act together down here in what we call the Western Caribbean. Nothing in the Gulf of Mexico at this point, early next week. Okay, An L is showing up on your screen here. We get into Wednesday morning. We got a thousand millibar low right here in the Western Caribbean. So this is starting to get close to that tropical storm status. All right. And it's kind of drifting north, but it's very large. I mean, this is a big, broad area of moisture. Some of this moisture is even extending over the Yucatan Peninsula into the Bay of Campeche. All right. And then we start to get into um, Thursday morning. This actually makes a landfall as a tropical storm now to the Yucatan Peninsula does whatever it does over the Yucatan. Next Friday morning, eight days from now, now you have a tropical storm. And this is a big difference from the run uh, just prior to this, which was the OOZ run. Um, and this is new to me. I'm going over all this information, except the Euro and all the models to follow after this. This GFS run is new to me. I hadn't even looked at it yet. So just kind of doing it with you guys here. This is a, a tropical storm pretty much in the South Central Gulf of Mexico at this point, which if you look at the run before this, it had a Category 5 hurricane further east in the Gulf of Mexico, a 932 millibar low. That's a Category 5 hurricane pretty much in the Gulf of Mexico next Friday morning. Now you look at the next run. Look, I mean, it's dropped over 50, it's dropped over 50 millibars. I'm sorry, it's risen over 50 millibars. And now it's only a tropical storm further west in the Gulf of Mexico. So a little bit of a west tick there, a big, huge west tick. But we, we don't call these trends when it just goes from one model run to the next. Okay, we just need consistent direction and we need consistent movement in one direction for it for to call it a trend there. But it still just kind of chills down here in the Bay of Campeche. Half of it's in the Bay, half of it's in the Gulf. There's not like there's a defining line out there, but this turns into a hurricane, uh, deepens, gets stronger. At the same time, we have another hurricane entering our uh, screen out here in the main development region. I'm not going to talk about that much, but this has been showing up over the last few runs on just about all model guides. So this is something to watch too. But we're really watching this. This is starting to deepen into a powerful hurricane at this point. It's a 968 millibar low category two, maybe low end category three hurricane. And it is just chilling in one spot. In fact, uh, next Thursday and a Friday gets into the Gulf and the Bay of Campeche and just spins around for a couple days. And this is as far out as it goes. So we're gonna be talking about this if something does develop down here probably throughout the rest of September, just about. I'm going to get to the last days of September, and we have a huge hurricane right here in the uh, Bay of Campeche, Gulf of Mexico. But if you look at the run prior to this, it had a Category 5 hurricane, much further east, much cons more concerning run. But here's the thing is we're getting a lot of flip-flopping, right? This is the run prior to the run running right now. This is the run prior to that had a Category 5 hurricane heading right towards Louisiana. This is the run prior to that. Had this thing way off the coast of the southeast, right? So look, bang, bang, bang. That's a lot of movement. If you take anything out of those four runs, you would say, okay, well, that looks like a west trend, right? So yeah, pretty wild stuff. I and mean, we got a major hurricane way out here in the Atlantic too. So there's a lot going on here. All right, what about the European? The European continues to be a conservative model run in this uh, and tracking this tropical system. Saturday morning, nothing. Sunday morning, nothing. Uh, Monday morning, nothing. Uh, just still a blob of uh, moisture down there in the Western Caribbean. And then next Tuesday morning, we start to see an L occasionally pop up on your screen. Just a huge, broad area of low pressure 
I just, it's hard for me to believe that this is something. I think the Euro suffers from some sort of biased. And this is not Mitch pulling for the worst case scenario, but the Euro is just always conservative with tropical systems. But this is just one massive, broad area of cyclonic low pressure out here. Okay, and we keep this going, and it finally does consolidate something in the Bay of Campeche. You see the L down there in the bay close to Mexico, and it does gradually start to strengthen this and just kind of get trapped in weak steering currents. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Uh, but just has a weak tropical storm just chilling down here in the Bay of Campeche, uh, just, you know, setting up camp here. So it's not a super concerning model run in this case. So now we look at the Euro AI model. It, it kind of follows the Euro and wants to stay west. But here we go, Saturday. Then we get all the way to Monday. We get all the way into Tuesday. We have a low showing up in the Western Caribbean. We get into Wednesday. This low kind of does what the GFS does, but weaker. Makes a landfall into the Yucatan Peninsula. Then it kind of does what the G, the the Euro does. Starts to strengthen this somewhat in the Bay of Campeche about like eight days from now. <laughs> We're still talking about this. I mean, eight days from now, guys, this thing could just be just getting going. It's pretty wild. September the 27th, not tomorrow, um, not tomorrow as in Friday, next Friday. And then it takes this all the way to 10 days out. And we're just going to, we might as well just keep this going. This is a strengthening tropical system and then makes landfall as a, you know, a category one, category two hurricane, pretty much right where Francine made landfall uh, several days back. And look, this model is showing some sort of tropical system out here too, just like the other model guides was. And let's look at the late... Yeah, the Euro does not show that as much, but the Canadian model, folks, has been with this for a while. Gets this going in the Western Caribbean. This is already a tropical storm next Tuesday morning, September the 24th. Turns this into a hurricane by uh, next Wednesday morning, six days from now, as it's splitting the gap between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. And then we keep this going. This begins to just gradually intensify, not rapidly, but gradually. And by the time we get a week from today, um, next Thursday morning, this is a 977 millibar low, um, strengthening very slowly, making a landfall in the western panhandle of Florida uh, sometime next Thursday as a hurricane. Okay, and we look at the icon. We're going over all of it, right? Look at the icon. What is the icon model doing? Let's just go all the way to the end of this run. No point in rolling through that all slow. And it, it, one, one week from today, it has a tropical storm in the far western bay of Campeche, Gulf of Mexico. And, um, it, you know, the common theme out of all this, that and, and, and a lot of people, are, I think I saw one comment yesterday, it was a little, a little hasty there, and it said something like, um, you know, just, just tell us pretty much what's going to happen, okay? I will always give you my opinion. My opinion on this right now is something is going to develop. I don't know if it's going to become a name storm in the Western Caribbean. I'm not sure about that. But what I do know is, is I think this is going to get into the Bay of Campeche or Gulf of Mexico and, and, and really form into something and hit somebody. So what I'm saying is I would watch out the last few days of September, last maybe several days of September, which I guess technically could be right now, but the last few, uh, anywhere from two to five days of September, for some sort of tropical cyclone uh, to hit the Gulf coastline. I mean, that would be my bet here. Now, as far as the strength, I have no clue. Well, you know, I'm not I'm not even going to try at that. But it could be anywhere from a tropical storm to a major hurricane. Absolutely. I know that's very broad. Uh, but, I mean, let's just keep it real. I mean, we don't know exactly what's going to happen here. And another thing is I think that there, this thing is going to move slow. And I'm going to talk about why here in a second. I think the steering currents will be very stagnant out here. So let's go over the latest GEFS ensemble. And let's see if we have the latest run. And we don't. So we're going to have to stick with the OOZ here um, from last night. And you're going to see a bunch of very, I mean, it's going to be hard to see on your screen probably, but you're going to see a bunch of weird numbers down here. It says 0282. You know, 02 stands for 1,002 millibar low. 95 would stand for a 995 millibar low. So, of course, the more 90s and 80s that you see down here, the stronger the system. But in general, what I want you to just look at when you see this, I want you to just focus on the fact that we have these kind of this brighter yellow and orange showing up here. This tells us that we're um, looking at more of a higher 
likelihood that some sort of tropical system is trying to get its act together in this area here in the Western Caribbean. But you notice how broad it is. I mean, you got some members over here, some members over here, some right down the middle. Now watch what happens here. We keep this going. Some members are able to find some sort of escape route where they're able to kind of jolt north pretty quick. A lot of the members are trapped down here still in the Western Caribbean. Some of them are sneaking into um, the Bay of Campeche, the BOC. Okay, so we get right here and it looks even more wild, right? A lot, a lot of strong hurricanes in this. You got some 951 millibar hurricanes, some 949s. But if you notice here, you got some members way up here already about to make landfall, if not made landfall already. And we got still some members still way down here. Some of them are escaping over here too. Okay, so it tells me really one thing here. the we, we, we do not have a good handle on the steering currents right now. And what happens here is, you know, some members are still trying to cruise across the Gulf of Mexico 10 days from now. But then there's a lot of members that's already made landfall and that's heading up the east, east coast. Okay, so it just tells me that th there's really uh, some 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 broadness with this i mean there, there's a wide range of possibilities as far as wherever this tro potential tropical cyclone cyclone can go now same thing with the eps guys i mean it starts out down there in the caribbean as you can tell those highlighted colors right here indicating all those numbers and then same thing i mean this is even more broad i mean you got you got members over here you got members still down here in the caribbean you got members getting into the bay of campeche here so, I mean, there's a pretty wide spread right in this area. And this is just getting out to about six to seven days from now. I mean, you got, it's just, it's pretty wild. And it's just because we have weak steering currents and the models cannot figure out where this thing is going to go. It's not, it's definitely not a cut and dry scenario with steering currents. And I mean, we get all the way into, let's say, this is all the way into next Saturday morning. So nine days from now, the one thing you can take from the EPS the European ensemble is that we're going to have some sort of tropical system in the Bay of Campeche or Gulf of Mexico, most likely. It's just, where is it going to be? I mean, is it going to be cruising up here? Is it going to be cruising this way, this way? I mean, is it going to be kind of going off like that? We, we don't know. It's a tough one. Um, but as we're moving forward here, I'm going to show you another way to look at the ensembles. This more so just shows a closer look at the members. And, and once again, this is just, I'm going to keep it at one week out. And this is the GEFS ensemble from overnight. You see some of the stronger members are, are the ones that kind of jet out faster and sneak into the central to um, eastern Gulf of Mexico. You can see them here. You know, you see the pink right here. That's a very strong member. Um, and these are just kind of stronger like tropical storms and hurricanes. And some of the weaker members sort of just kind of drift around, go over the the uh, Bay of Campeche, um, and then the Yucatan Peninsula. And we will take this a little bit further out. Let's go all the way out to about 240 hours out, and you'll see it even get a little even wilder here. You know, you got some members still trapped down here, but the, the GEFS ensemble from overnight has a lot of strong members going, staying east. But I do think that most likely um, some of this is going to tick west. Um, and, and we don't have the length of the run here yet. It only goes 72 hours out, so we're not quite sure. But the European Ensemble here is definitely further west. I mean, it has a lot of weaker members kind of sneak into the Bay of Campeche. Um, a few stronger members are the ones that kind of jet out north and get into the Gulf of Mexico faster. And then we look at 240 hours out here. And um, let's see. There's definitely a wide variety. I mean, we got a lot of members getting trapped out over here in the western Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche. The stronger members look like they kind of, like I said, jet north through the Gulf of Mexico much quicker here. Um, so, I mean, there's just a wide variety here. It really is. So, But um, looking at uh, the upper wind pattern, what could promote this to strengthen into one of those higher end scenarios? So we're going to start this off with Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, the latest GFS already, already shows that we almost have a tropical storm um, in areas of the Caribbean. We're going to move this a little bit forward here and take it to about right here. So this is like next Tuesday into Wednesday, uh, September the 24th into the 25th. So next week, all right? So this is our tropical system. GFS says, hey, we got a tropical storm already in the Western Caribbean taking a name right here. So as we know, these tropical systems, they spin cyclonically. All right, in the lower to mid levels, just like this, 
right? But this thing is situated under what we call an upper level anticyclone. So winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere are quite literally going the opposite direction. You would think, well, if winds in the upper and the um and the upper levels of the atmosphere above the system are going in the opposite direction, then this has got to mess up the actual cyclonic flow of the system. Well, it doesn't. So I'm going to draw on this. And if you look at these air, these uh, lines right in here, there's like arrows kind of embedded into it and they kind of go like this. And, you know, these kind of go like that. So it gets a little weirder down here, but this kind of gets dispersed outward. So in general, we have air being pushed out away from the system in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This allows for more air to rise. That gets pushed away. That allows for more air to rise. That gets pushed away. Rising air allows for those um, showers and storms to develop. Showers and storms create a very moist environment. These tropical cyclones like moist air. So therefore, you have the strengthening of a tropical system. So what I'm trying to say is the upper level wind pattern of this system in the Western Caribbean support strengthening and we keep this going here and we move forward here and this moves and hits land so this is the only thing that really prevents this from taking off kind of in the i would say the medium term within that five to six day periods because it hits the yucatan peninsula but it's still under one heck of an environment right here like right here very low shear environment there's not really any airflow in the upper levels of the atmosphere hitting this system right here low shear environment so this sits there and just kind of spins away and deepens and gets awfully strong and then eventually past 10 days from now heads toward the gulf heads towards the gulf coastline but you stop it right here for example and i know this is past 10 days out but this thing is chilling in such a high-end environment that supports strengthening that it's just it looks like it's creating its own kind of upper wind pattern around it, its own cyclonic upper wind pattern but in the upper levels i mean this thing is just pushing air away this this thing is just thriving okay there's there's no air i mean look at this look at this huge flow around this system like this it's pretty wild i mean so this is a worst case scenario and i think that this is why you're starting to see some of these awful model runs and you look at the run prior to this as same thing like this is the run last night to show the category 5 hurricane in the gulf of mexico this thing is in i hate to use this, these weird words but i mean it is it, it's an environment just to absolutely take off like just a nuclear environment i mean you have this massive massive right here um it's like ULAC that's covering up the entire Gulf of Mexico and areas of the Caribbean here. I mean, just uh, air just, just circulating around this entire system. Not saying this is purely driven off of it, but just a, a no shear environment is setting up right here. And you can really tell here if you look at the moisture, okay, and this is actually going back to the current run, but look at this incredible moist environment around the system. Okay, there's no dry air getting into the system. So th this is the concern past 10 days. I mean, even in this 8 to 12 day range, when this system finally gets together and gets into the Gulf of Mexico side here of the Atlantic. So as far as steering currents, if we look at the latest um, GFS, there is a trough right here just kind of hanging out off the coast of the eastern U.S. Does this have any pulling mechanism in the system? It could but it's starting to look like it isn't. And see, it looks like this is going to miss the trough. Several days ago, it was having this trough hanging out around a little bit longer. And now it doesn't. It actually develops some weak ridging. So you see this... Um, let's get all this back off here. You see this area in blue that is low pressure. This area in blue is low pressure. But let's focus on this area in blue because this is what would be Helene or Isaac, the, the system in the Caribbean we're talking about. Flow around high pressure, which is indicated here in the orange salmon like colors goes like this right okay flow around uh, low pressure is gonna go like this okay just like that just like around this system right here flow around this is gonna go just like that so I draw on that a lot when we're tracking a tropical system because all this flow around the ridge and the low pressure and the trough is different so we keep this going I want you to note there's not really anything pulling this one way or the other at this point. Okay, this thing is sort of just drifting. You see all this white right here? This is like a wide open weakness. There's weakness here, weakness there, weakness here. So when there's a weakness like this, when we have a stronger system, they're just going to gain latitude. They're just going to drift north. 
Okay, these stronger systems, low pressure always want to go north anyways, but if there's nothing pulling them one way or the other, then they're just going to head north. And that's why it starts to do this on the um and that's why it starts to do this on the OOZ GFS, for example. Now, if we actually look at the O6Z, what's the difference here? Well, the difference is this is a little bit stronger. I mean, this is a little bit weaker in the in the in the um a little bit weaker in the shorter term. Okay. One thing I'll note is this ridge is extending a little bit further down here. So there's a flow going around this ridge just like that. So our weaker tropical system at this point, it's like a tropical storm right here, might be getting pushed, you know, further west. But watch what happens here. Keep this going. The ridge sort of heads on out, doesn't really influence this system anymore. At this point, there's nothing really pulling this one way or the other. Okay, this is just a huge area of low pressure, which would be a tropical system just hanging out over the Bay of Campeche, Gulf of Mexico. Ridge is too far north. This little thing right here, this trough of low pressure too far this way. Um, now, I'm not saying this won't pull on this some. It could. But in general, in this time frame, 8 to 10 days out, it's just too far away. So eventually, this just heads north because it gets stronger and it... Stronger systems want to get poleward, want to gain latitude. So it eventually just heads north. It could get pulled from this area of low pressure right here. Very well could. Uh, because you remember this area of low pressure, the flow around this is just like that. Okay, so this actually might yank on this system just a little bit. But at the same time, I mean, you got the flow around this ridge going like this. So kind of competing steering currents, but they're still far enough away from this. And guys, I'm just kind of speaking on steering currents you know we don't actually have a tropical system um, but eventually th this goes on to make a landfall on the Gulf Coast where it just has a wide open weakness just to head north um, so and another thing is you know we got rocket fuel in the Gulf of Mexico the Caribbean sea, sur sea surface temperatures 30 to 31 32 degrees uh, Celsius that's equivalent to mid to upper 80s in Fahrenheit so it's plenty warm enough for a tropical system to thrive so that's an update on the tropics uh, we give you an update on what's happening back home. Uh, we do have storms moving across the middle of the country, the upper Midwest, the plains. We got a little moisture across the eastern U.S., a little uh, tropical moisture off the coast of the western, uh, off the western coast of Florida. We got some moisture kind of pivoting back down out of Canada into areas of Montana. And we do got some moisture across the southwest, too. So, uh, watch his warnings and advisories much quieter out there. We got some wind advisories across the Dakotas, a few heat advisories across Texas, some winter weather advisories across the Sierra Nevada flood watches in areas of California too. But it, you know, it's you know, as far as any kind of alerts, it's pretty quiet this morning. Uh, the excessive rainfall outlook, no real risk of flash flooding. Um, and then the storm prediction center outlook, uh, we do have a very large kind of scrawny, slight risk extending from the Canadian U.S. border all the way down to about the Oklahoma-Kansas border. This does include Minneapolis, Duluth, across Kansas City, uh, Des Moines, tornado risk. There is a legit 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given location up here in areas of Wisconsin and Minnesota in that brown area. 2% risk in the green. The wind threat, 15% chance in the entire slight risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then the hell threats, 15% risk in the yellow of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. But folks, there's also a hatch risk of hell. So in the black outline area, there is a 10% risk of hell exceeding two inch in diameter or larger. So definitely a big time severe weather day up here. Uh, but let's talk about the southeast first. Overall, not too bad of a day. You know, it it's it's been pretty muggy, just warm out here. I wouldn't call it hot. It's been hot some days, but we're going to get a lot of tropical downpour action down here in southern Florida. Isolated showers and storms are possible throughout the rest of Florida, possible in Georgia, but definitely more widespread up in North Carolina. And we're going to have a little flow that kind of moves out of West Virginia into Western Virginia later on this evening. Could get some storms in like Roanoke, for example, and they might make it all the way down to the triad of North Carolina later tonight, but not an active weather day across the southeast. The Northeast, not nothing too bad going on this morning. We're going to have some moisture, though, with a little weak low off the coast of southern New England that could throw some rain um, across areas of Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, and just southeast Connecticut. Um, by the time we are waking up tomorrow morning, this will kind of throw a little bit more moisture all the way to Boston, maybe the coastal regions of New Hampshire, Rhode Island, 
as we're getting into our Friday morning. So just some kind of a cloudy, overcast, rainy kind of day across southeast um, sections of southern New England. Everybody else, though, there ain't really a whole lot going on across New England. Uh, the south central U.S., some isolated downpours possible down in southern Texas. Not a big, big deal at all. Uh, but we're going to get some storm potential. Much more isolated down here in like Oklahoma and in eastern Kansas, but very possible. If you live in Kansas City, for example, surrounding uh, cities all the way into especially northern Missouri, the storms that do form later this evening could pack a punch. There's a chance you might not even get a drop of rain. But the energy that does form will drift across northern Missouri all the way into like St. Louis for tomorrow morning where you guys could get some downpours, things like that. So north central U.S., this is where we could have our most active weather today. Um, we take start this morning. We got a little energy, but then as we're getting, man, look how quick these storms form. Like for example, this is around 3 p.m. Central Time. Not a whole lot going on. Then we take it to 5 p.m. Man, look at those storms in southeast and eastern sections of Minnesota. And there will be a tornado risk with this. And then this energy will grow up scale and really get going across Iowa, eventually into the western half of Wisconsin later this um, this evening. Uh, some storms are possible all the way up into Canada, northeast Minnesota, Duluth. Watch out. And then we could get some showers and storms that are possible across the UP of Michigan later tonight. And this rain will greet you guys across the Midwest, including Chicago, Milwaukee, Green Bay overnight uh, tonight. But a closer look at these storms. Look how they just kind of fire out of nowhere. Bang. Man, Minneapolis, I'm telling you, around 4 to 5, 6 p.m., you guys could get some powerful storms, a tor legit tornado risk. I mean, down there to Rochester, southeast um, sections of Minnesota, heavy rain, storms, large hail, damaging winds, even a tornado risk with this. I mean, Duluth, be careful. I mean, 6, 7 p.m., these storms will move, you know, through Eau Claire, uh, La Crosse, all the way to Madison, Wisconsin. They could start to lose some steam by, there, by then. Dubuque could get some storms later this evening, like after midnight maybe. And then these just continue to cross through. Now, if you're talking about the tornado threat with this, we'll look at this and look at that. Uh, it really likes eastern Minnesota into western Wisconsin, even northeastern Iowa the most for the better chance of some of these updrafts to be spinning. So there is a tornado risk there. And then we look at the um, damaging wind threat. You might hear rocking on the other side of my door right here. He's crying. He wants me in. He wants me to bring him in here. But the damaging wind threat... 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts are possible with some of these. Uh, so just, just be mindful of this. This is a pretty big system moving through. So some strong gusty winds across the entire Midwest, upper Midwest, I would say. The western U.S., quiet weather compared to the last few days. Some higher elevation Sierra Nevada snow could fall outside of the, that and the lower elevations. Just some rain showers are possible across central California. But outside of that, guys, a pretty quiet day across the western U.S., so... Temperatures, it's warm everywhere across the east. Nobody's really cool. It's just been an extension of summer. Happens almost every year. Now, I will say in the upper Midwest, it's definitely been in the Great Lakes region, been just hanging on to summer a little bit longer than normal. But it, nobody's really cool out there at all. I mean, even, I mean, it's very warm this morning, like across the middle of the country. So, temperatures in the plains, I mean, in the hundreds and the 90s. So, unfortunately, it's getting hot again and even the western u.s you guys are starting to warm up and i'm going to tell you throughout the rest of september guys um, i'm not seeing any big time cool downs we'll have to see what early october has in store uh, but uh looks like an extension of summer will continue throughout the rest of september but there is some i would say this there, there is some uh signs that we could have a big trough here in about 10 days or, or more so we just have to watch for that god bless all y'all have a wonderful day and uh we might be full send ahead on these more in these uh, evening videos. So I might have a video this evening. Um, I just want to keep you guys as aware as possible in the Gulf of Mexico because I just got an eerie feeling about this one. So God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you again soon.